New product time. Yeah, I gotta rush through these, huh? Yeah, we'll get through it. Okay. New, new, new. Blammo. Blammo, new. Okay, ready? Okay. What's this? This is a little, uh, I think this is PSP 3000 joystick. It's a little thumbstick, uh, handy for little projects if you want to have inputs and out, you know, to your project that have two analog uh, X and Y, Z axis control. So you can use our uh, four pin breakout. It's the same one as we use in our touch controller. Um, oh, can you go to the next, next picky? Mm -hmm. Yeah, just, it shows it on, uh, no, the, um, this one. You want this one there? This one. Yeah. Oh, wait, no, sorry, this one. Sure. There you go. Uh, so you plug it into the four pin breakout and you can, you know, it's analog, so you just need two analog inputs, you know, X up, left, right, is Y, and then you have a little joystick. Okay. Handy. All right, next up. This is the Zero LiPo. This is a little um, boost converter that you can plug in a LiPo uh, charger into your Raspberry Pi. It works with any Raspberry Pi. It's like, neither a fat nor a hat nor a bonnet. It's just a little plug-in board. As you can see, you plug in a battery and uh, you know it just runs your Pi. So this is handy. It has like a super high power boost converter. So it will be able to run your Pi 3 or your Pi 0, whatever it is. It has a low okay. power indicator as well, all good stuff. I like that our products have videos. This is a good one because it shows that you can use a device. It's obviously Internet of Things. You can tell by yeah. the sliders. And then you can turn on and off a light because we have a new relay. Yeah, this is the Power Relay Featherwing. So we've had other Relay Featherwings, but they were small signal level. This one is actually pretty high power. It can do uh, 1,200 watts, so it can do small appliances. It can turn on off your TV or you know a toaster oven, um, you know, or electronic devices around your house. Uh, it can do it could do quite a bit, um, up to 250 uh, volts AC, up to 10 amps uh, at 120. Look at the look at the data sheet for the exact specs because depending on whether it's inductive or resistive load, you'll have to derate it. But for resistive load, I think it was um, 1,200 watts. So handy ones, it's a three volt relay. So it works with all of our feathers. And uh, we actually select or soldered it even. So you just, you get it with the, the relay and the um, terminal blocks attached. And then you just solder close one of the jumpers to select which pin you want to use. And then I, we have the demo here showing it with a lamp and a blue fruit feather, but of course, or an ESP feather connected to this Adafruit is I.O. It, this is using Adafruit I.O. Yeah, using Adafruit I.O. We're, internet, we're, we're eating our internet connected dog food, as they say. Yeah. In the biz. Yeah. So this is great. I hope they don't this, say that. The smaller relays are a little bit less expensive, handy when you need a latching relay or a very small signal and you want to be compact. But this one is nice and chunky, big okay. uh, sugar cube relay. We put these in right before the show started. These are almost the stars of the show besides you. Um, they're pretty cool. We have another product out for this, but... What is this lady doing? These are the radio feather wings. So if you would like to create, you know, a, a LoRa gateway to Bluetooth or Wi-Fi or, or Ethernet, whatever, you can use these to add a radio, either RFM 69 or a LoRa RFM 9X radio. So we have four types, one of each frequency and then each um, radio type. So a lower cost packet radio or higher cost LoRa radio, you know, pick your poison, whichever you want to use. And then you plug it in on top of your feather, and we've tested it with a bunch of the different feather chipsets. And so, I think for in particular, it's just for people who had an ESP8266 and wanted to add, uh, you know, a gateway. So you would have a RFM69 low-cost radio for your nearby sensors and remote yeah, remote sensing and actuation. And then it, that data would be tunneled through an ESP to Wi-Fi. So you would have a radio gateway, basically. So this is, allows you to do that. This is some Travis Goodspeed stuff up in here. It's, it's definitely radio, and if yeah. you want to use the 433, you need an amateur license. Like that, that, that's a funny joke for like seven people who really know like how relevant it is to, it's just it's funny. You, yeah, you might be able, yeah, you can definitely do some, it's got yeah. PS, uh, FSK, G, FSK, um, OK, so you could do some basic encoding. You could probably get some ham radio. Yeah conversations going over these radios. You could um, get 20 dBm, so you can actually go pretty far, too. OK. All right. So the star of the, sh the show tonight, besides you, is this cute little robot. Hi. This is an adorable little Maybe. robot. We had the squarish robot that was a two-wheel or four-wheel drive. And um, the factory that made that robot was like, hey, we have a round one. And we're like, 
I don't want to have to design a robot. I would rather buy your robot. So we just bought a whole bunch of these. They're adorable. They come with the motor. We've been looking forever. What? We've been looking forever. For a good one. Yeah. Yeah. This one is really good. It's large enough that you can, um, you know, fit an Arduino or Raspberry Pi. It's really strong. So you can, um, you can yeah, carry quite there, a bit of weight. So this one, you know, shows it running with a LiPo battery, which you can do if you, if you jumper the wires around. But we have our demo on the table here, which has um, some AA batteries. So this is uh, carrying a little LiPo, and then the batteries are done with AA. And then I have this hooked up to a blue fruit feather, so. I made a. Yeah, I mean, this is going to run off of the table. Yeah, but that's fun, though. So let's see if it still works. Hey, Whoa. Rip, rip. Whoa. Okay. Yeah, you get the point. Hold on. <laughs> Got stuck on the cables. Whoa. Whee! It's a lot of fun. So on the, on the floor, it's a little bit better because you're not running into uh, all the cables here. But um, it's a really good base like this it's just the chassis but you get two wheels um these nice strong dc motors with gearboxes it doesn't have an encoder but that's okay it's got this little um balancing wheel as well for a two-wheel drive uh, robot this is pretty great i mean it can it carry all this weight it's about a pound yeah. feels like of uh of batteries like a create a robot set we're never going to use or sell. We tested them and they just weren't good enough. Yeah, this one is a really, I, I like these ones. They're the aluminum, so you can machine them. Um, you know, cheap robot chassis use acrylic, but then you know, the moment it falls off a table or bumps into something, it just cracks in half. So what's nice about these is the aluminum is, um, has tons of mounting slots, is easy to machine. Uh, we might even get another uh, one of these plates as an accessory so you could add a three or four level robot. There's a little bit of space down here. And uh, it's, just, it's just really great, a little robot for um, education. And it's pretty low cost for like yeah. 20 bucks, you get the chassis and the motors and the wheels. Used to be that would only get you like, you know, a servo and a wheel, but now it gets you the whole thing. You just need a motor driver and um, our feather wing motor driver works great with it. Okay. All right, and Lady Ada. Meet me. That is new products for the week. Nice.